At 3.30 p.m., Magnesia sought her employer, who was asleep in the sitting room. "'Mars Paul, a gentleman to see you.' The professor awoke, and had her send the man in. The man entered hurriedly, hat in hand. "'Are you Professor Carbonic?' "'I am. What can I do for you?' "'Can you—' the man hesitated. "'My friend has just been killed in an accident. You couldn't—' He hesitated again. "'I know that it is unbelievable,' answered the professor. "'But I can.' Professor Carbonic, for some years, had suffered from the effects of a weak heart. His fears on this score had recently been entirely relieved. He now had the prescription, death no more. The startling discovery and the happenings of the last twenty-four hours had begun to take effect on him, and he did not wish to make another call until he was feeling better. "'I'll go,' said the professor after a period of musing. My discoveries are for the benefit of the human race. I must not consider myself. He satisfied himself that he had all his tools. He had just sufficient of the preparation for one injection. This, he thought, would be enough. However, he placed in his case two vials of different solutions, which were the basis of his discovery. These fluids had but to be mixed, and after the chemical reaction had taken place, the preparation was ready for use. He searched the house for Magnesia, but the old servant had made it certain that she did not intend to act as nurse to dead men on their journey back to life. Reluctantly, he decided to go without her. "'How is it possible?' exclaimed the stranger, as they climbed into the waiting machine. I have worked for fifteen years before I found the solution, entered the professor slowly. I cannot understand on what you have based a theory for experimenting on something that has been universally accepted as impossible of solution. With electricity, all is possible, as I have proved. Seeing the skeptical look his companion assumed, he continued, Electricity is the basis of every motive power we have. It is the base of every formation that we know. The professor was warming to the subject. Go on, said the stranger. I am extremely interested. Every sort of heat that is known, whether dormant or active, is only one arm of the gigantic force electricity. The most our knowledge of electricity has been gained through its offspring, magnetism. A body entirely devoid of electricity is a body dead. Magnetism is apparent in many things, including the human race, and its presence in many people is prominent. But how did this lead to your experiments? If magnetism, or motive force, is the offspring of electricity, the human body must and does contain electricity. That we use more electricity than the human body will induce is a fact. It is apparent, therefore, that a certain amount of electricity must be generated within the human body, and without aid of any outside forces. Science has known for years that the body's power is brought into action through the brain. The brain is our generator. The little cells and the fluid that separate them have the same action as the liquid of a wet battery. Like a wet battery, this fluid wears out, and we must replace the fluid, or the sal ammoniac, or we lose the use of the battery or body. I have discovered what fluid to use that will produce the electricity in the brain cells which the human body is unable to induce. We are here, said the stranger, as he brought the car to a stop at the curb. You are still a skeptic, noting the voice of the man, but you shall see shortly. The man led him into the house and introduced him to Mrs. Murray Attic, who conducted him to the room where the deceased Murray Attic was laid. Without a word, the professor began his preparations. He was ill, and would have preferred to have been at rest in his own comfortable house. 
he would do the work quickly and get away. Selecting a gimlet, he bored a hole through the skull of the dead man. Inserting his hypodermic, he injected all the fluid he had mixed. He had not calculated on the size of the gimlet, and the dowels he carried would not fit the hole. As a last resource, he drove in his lead pencil, broke it off close, and carefully cut the splinter smooth with the head. "'It will be seventy-five cents, madam,' said the professor as he finished the work. Mrs. Murray Attic paid the money unconsciously. She did not know whether he was embalming her husband or just trying the keenness of his new tools. The death had been too much for her. The minutes passed, and still the dead man showed no signs of reviving. Professor Carbonic paced the floor in an agitated manner. He began to be doubtful of his ability to bring the man back. Worried, he continued to tramp up and down the room. His heart was affecting him. He was tempted to return the seventy-five cents to the prostrate wife when the dead man moved. The professor clasped his hands to his throat, and with his head thrown back, dropped to the floor, a fatal attack of the heart. He became conscious quickly. "'The bottle's there,' he whispered. "'Mix! Make injection!' He became unconscious again. The stranger found the gimlet and bored a hole in the professor's head. Hastily seizing one of the vials, he poured the contents into the deeply made hole. Then he realized that there was another bottle. "'Mix them!' shrieked the almost hysterical woman. It was too late. The one vial was empty, and the professor's body lay lifeless. In mental agony, the stranger grasped the second vial and emptied its contents also into the professor's head and stopped the hole with the cork. Miraculously, Professor Carbonic opened his eyes and rose to his feet. His eyes were like balls of fire. His lips moved inaudibly, and as they moved, little blue sparks were seen to pass from one to another. His hair stood out from his head. The chemical reaction was going on in the professor's brain with a dose powerful enough to restore ten men. He tottered slightly. Murray Attic, now thoroughly alive, sat up straight in bed. He grasped the brass bedpost with one hand and stretched out the other to aid the staggering man. He caught his hand. Both bodies stiffened. A slight crackling sound was audible. A blue flash shot from where Attic's had made contact with the bedpost. Then a dull thud as both bodies struck the floor. Both men were electrocuted, and the formula is still a secret. The End